All right, what's going on, you beautiful boys and girls? Welcome to Pack the Brew. Appreciate you guys joining us today. This week is all about the American League West. We have done the other five divisions. So if you missed out on any of them, go check them out. And if you guys are new here, I'm Ryan. That's Gage. We do everything baseball-related, culture, hot takes, predictions, whatever it may be, flood baseball as much as we do. Stick on for a little bit. We'd really appreciate it. But today is all about the Los Angeles Angels. Of course, their biggest storyline this offseason was losing Shohei Otani. They still have Mike Trout. Can the Angels compete in a very loaded American League West or even get a playoff spot for the first time in over a decade? Gage? Let's find out, uh, and it starts in the starting rotation. For me, uh, my 1-1 one one is going to be Reed Detmers. The Angels' ace carried a 4-1-3 FIP, 2.5 F4 in 148 innings last year. There's room for improvement. I think he'll achieve that this year. My ace for the Angels is going to be Patrick Sandoval. He is open to a starter. Nearly five walks per nine. Not great. Needs 2022 version again. Definitely. At two, I have Griffin Canning. The number two looks really good in spring training. Obviously, it's a very small sample size, but if you're an Angels fan, it's definitely something to be looking forward to. And then my number two is going to be Reed Detmers. Also, like Sandoval, would like that 2022 form from Detmers where he had a no-hitter. Uh, 4.13 FIP, not horrible, not number two worthy, though. Fair. Uh, at three, I have Chase Selseth. Uh, Silseth looked good in his first full season in the bigs, but struggled with giving up the home run ball. Averaged about a, a like homer and a half uh, per nine this past season. If you can limit that, I wouldn't be shocked to see him jump to that number two by the end of the year. Then my number three is going to be your number two, Griffin Cannon. He gets solid number of Ks, which is great, but numbers-wise, almost the same starting pitcher as the first two guys. Yep, I think you yeah, you nailed it. At four, it's Patrick Sandoval for me. This dude has a very good repertoire of pitches on him, and it resulted in him being the opening day starter for this team. I hope that he takes a step forward this season. Then my number four is going to be Tyler Anderson. One year with the Dodgers in his career where he's an all-star, fantastic numbers. Very clear outlier. I felt like everyone knew when he signed a contract after that, after that year, he was not going to repeat that year again that he had with the Dodgers. Numbers last year were the worst in his career. So just not a lot to be like, woo, this is a – Yeah. Not, nothing to be too happy about with him. Yeah, definitely. He's my five. He's a vet. He struggled a lot in 2023, but looking forward to watching him this year. You mentioned that outlier. Uh, obviously, that's not going to happen again, but that's what you're rooting for if you're an Angels fan. Hang that your head on that be, one. Yeah, that would be a, that would be big if the Angels could somehow get that. Then round out the rotation at number five is going to be Chase Silth, Silseth. Uh, sub four ERA. He might have the highest ceiling out of the five, which uh, not – not a high bar uh, for the Angels. It's it's not a horrible rotation, but like the Angels have been for years, it's an average rotation at best. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's that's the reason I had Silseth, Silseth at my three was mm-hmm. just because of that high upside. I really liked what he brought to the table. I think uh, he can rise up for, there. I think he can rise up there for yeah, sure. Definitely. Closing the door for the Angels is going to be Carlos Estevez. Uh, 31 saves last year with a 407 FIP in his first year as the main closer. Yes, sir. Car- Carlos Estevez, also going to be my closer. All-star last year, extreme dominance in the first half. Second half, though, different stories. 6.59 ERA, completely different pitchers. Yeah, brutal stuff from him. Uh, at setup one, it's going to be Matt Moore. was lights out in 2022 with a 1-4 FIP. He regressed a little bit in 2023, but not to the point where he was unplayable. Yes, sir. Matt Moore, he did his job on three teams last year, including the Angels, and they decided to bring him back. Yep. And then it's set up two. It's going to be Ben Joyce for me. This dude is a flamethrower. I love him at Tennessee. I love him now. This dude's going to be dominant for a long time once he figures it out in the big leagues. I think he bounces off like big time off of last season. We usually don't have the same bullpen, but this time we do because my setup two is also going to be Ben Joyce. This is the most exciting arm on this Angels team by far. You could see him jump to closer if he gets it all together uh, like he should. Catching these guys for me is going to be Logan O'Hoppy. Uh, he's going to be relied on big time by his coach. They believe he can make 125 to 135 starts behind the dish this season. It was about league average last year with the bat. Looking forward to a breakout year for this kid. He definitely has that in him. You would love to see him make that many starts behind the plate if you're the Angels. Logan O'Hoppy, promising start to his career. Injured last year. Full 2024. Very excited for uh, at first, it's going to be Nolan, Nolan Shanuel. 
Uh, he looked really good in a short sample size for them last year. He's projected to stay around there for this upcoming season, rooting for him to do it. Nolan got called up after 22 minor league games. He just dominated dominated level after level. He put up solid numbers and a small sample size with the Angels. He's looking to continue to dominate the big leagues. Uh, and then at second, uh, you're looking at Brandon Drury for me. Brandon Drury for me, excuse me. And he's been the model of consistency the last three seasons. I have a feeling that he'll keep that trend up. My second baseman is going to be a little different. It's going to be Luis Renjifo. Uh Defense is below average, but a 114 WRC plus last year. You will take that. 100% on the other side of the middle infield for me. It's going to be Zach Nito. Uh, Nito has looked really good in spring training thus far. Uh, 149 WRC plus. He's hitting 349 as a batting average. I think you see a better year for this guy than last season. A big time breakout season on the horizon for him. Zach Neto at shortstop. Another quick call to the majors like Nolan. He's not a star. I don't think he'll ever be a star player, but he's going to be a very solid player, and I feel like he's shown that so far. And then at third, I have Luis Renjifo. Uh A very solid year last year, 264 average, 339, 444. Uh, finishes out that slash line with a 114 WRC+, plus, uh, 1.9 war for the kid. So pretty good stuff from him. So we just got second and third, flip-flop then, no big deal. At third, I got Brandon Drury. I uh, kept up 2022 and 2023, which I did not expect. I thought that was going to be a big outlier for him. But, no, he slugged nearly 500. Very impressive, impressive for him. Very good stuff. What does your outfield look like? So my outfield is going to be in left field. It's going to be Taylor Ward. Uh, when healthy, he's turning into a pretty nice bat. But, again, when healthy. Yeah, I know staying healthy is the name of the game for Taylor Ward. In center field, though, a uh, guy that you might have heard of, for me, it's going to be Mike Trout. You know what Mike Trout brings to the table. Uh, future Hall of Famer on the horizon for Mike Trout. Uh, very, very, I, I mean, you don't have to say anything else about him. You know Mike Trout. By the way, some people talk about him. You would think they don't know Mike Trout anymore because in center field, I also have Mike Trout. He's Mike Trout. Stop disrespecting his name. He's one of the greats. Yeah, and it's crazy to see that, I mean, all of these people just kind of forgot what he's doing. Uh, and, I, I mean, I even saw, like, spring training videos of people being like, yup, he's going to bring people back. Like, he's going to let people know this year. That's what I want him to do. I want I want him to let people know that he is still Mike Trout. He still has that in him. A big FU season for Mike Trout, MVP-type season, would, I feel like, would cure, like, cancer man like it would just be oh, yeah. so beautiful for this world if mike trout could be back to mvp form i i need that form of mike trout it'd be again. poetic justice it'd be poetic justice it would. Great. and then right feels gonna be mickey maniac uh from number one overall pick looked like a big bust to he's really been a new player with the angels and he's still only 25 so this isn't like a guy who's 32 finally making his mlb debut type crap no like he's he's got a chance to be a really solid player for a long time yeah, big time breakout year for him. Like at following three seasons of a negative F four ends up with a one point six one point six F four one fourteen WRC plus two eighty three thirty three or two eighty three oh seven four ninety five slash for the kid. That's that's insane. A late bloomer is what Mickey Moniak, I guess you could call him. Uh big fan of what he's done. Absolutely a big fan. I'm excited to see how he does in the outfield with Mike Trout. And then at DH, though, it's going to be Anthony Rendon. He hates baseball. It's either you have him at the DH or third base. He can't stay healthy anywhere, but I, I feel like he has a better chance to stay healthy at the DH, so I'll throw him there instead. Uh, I'm going to put him on the left bench. That's where I'm going to put Anthony Rendon because that's where he'll be spending a lot of games. But it, for me, it's also going to be DH. Uh, I think it's criminal to not have him in this lineup, but I don't think you'll see him a lot this season. Yeah, uh, his downfall needs to be studied. It's actually insanely signs a big you deal with the Angels. It, yeah, you say it over under over under fifty percent of games he plays in this year. Under, under, yeah, that's that's insane. Uh, Three hundred million to play, maybe yeah. eighty games. I mean, it's, it's that an contract. That contract is all time. Contract is all time bad. It is. It's. It really is. Him, Strasburg, and Corbin are the three worst right now. But I think Rendon is is number one. Uh, but then let's uh, let's give out the big boy trophies. Who do you got MVP of this Angels team? Uh, I mentioned it, but it's going to be Mike Trout. 
uh, future Hall of Famer. I really think that this bounce back year, I mean, I don't even know if you want to call it a bounce back year, but putting himself back on the map and making people know that he is still Mike Trout. He still has everything that he's ever done in him. Uh, I think that'd just be great. The only thing I wrote down for Mike Trout is he's Mike Trout. He's also my MVP. What else do you need to know? Definitely. It's Cy Young. I have, uh, I have Ben Joyce. I mentioned how high I am on this kid. Uh, as a setup, too, I really think he's going to bounce back. You mentioned it. I, I mean, closer is not out of the realm of possibility for this kid. I think he could do it. I would love to see that. I went with a starter, though, Reed Detmers, but honestly, really no one stands out. I mentioned all the top three pitchers are almost identical numbers-wise. numbers, numbers wise. Who's your rookie of the year? So rookie of the year is going to be Nolan Chanel. Uh reason he got called up right away because he was obviously ready. And for his, I'm even more ready for his first full year. I'm excited to see how, how he does. He's a big power bat that I think can, the Angels can really build around. Yeah, I also had him there, and I mentioned it. He really looked good in that short sample size for him. Uh, very powerful stuff from him. Uh, at breakout, at breakout, I have Zachary Nito. Um, I mean, just not not great the last couple of years, but I think a breakout is on the horizon for him. Just how he's performed in spring so far. Obviously, that's, I mean, a short sample size, but I think he's got it in him. Could definitely see Neto. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit different behind the plate, though. Logan O'Hoppy. He was going to be the breakout guy last year. Just got injured, though. As long as he stays healthy, he's going to be the guy. And then, I mean, I'm very high on Ben Joyce. I've mentioned it a couple times, but if he's going to if he's going to perform how I think he's going to perform, he's going to have to bounce back, too. Makes sense. Bounce back for me is going to be the guy who has just not been healthy. But as long as he is, he's Mike Trout still. Definitely. What's your favorite offseason move? Favorite offseason move. The Angels have been very quiet, very, very quiet, that somehow this is my favorite offseason move because that's how quiet they were. It was trained for Evan White. Uh, he was once a top prospect. He got paid, I'm pretty sure, before he even reached the major leagues. So I, I guess I'll go with this, but overall there's just not much. Yeah, there isn't much, and for that reason, I'm going to go with moving Ron Washington to being their manager. Uh, there wasn't much That's a good one. in this offseason. Ron Washington being a manager is, I, I think that a lot of people forget like how important a manager is, and when you switch an entire manager, like that can switch a philosophy of a team, and that's that's pretty powerful stuff. So for me, it's going to be getting that new manager. I was only looking player-wise, but... If I could go back and switch, I, I think I'm going to agree with you on that one. Uh, but who is your most underrated player on the Angels? I mean, if you really, I mean, if they really think that Logan O'Hoppy is going to make 125 to 135 starts behind the dish, I think you have to give it to him, right? That's fair. And I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm, I'm going to go different because my most underrated is going to be Mike Trout. He has become like underrated at this point. Mike Trout, everyone knows the name Mike Trout. But do people treat him like Mike Trout still? There is once upon a time, like, you cannot argue me this was the best player in baseball. I understand if you have Shohei or Mookie or Acuna there instead because Trout has not been healthy. I understand that. But the people that act like he is not even a top 10 player anymore blows my effing mind. Like, I am shocked at the disrespect Mike Trout has gotten. This is the best player of our generation, and he's proven that time and time again. And I need an MVP season from him more than the Angels need it because Mike Trout's still Mike yeah. Trout. Put some respect on Mike Trout's name. It's embarrassing. It pisses me off the amount of disrespect Mike Trout has gotten, especially this offseason. MLB Network had him as, I'm pretty sure, the 14th best player in baseball. A joke. A joke yeah. that that is a top baseball network disrespecting one of the best players in the game, one of the best players of all time. I, I mean, you're you're fired up. I figured I'd ask you the question in the episode. Then, I mean, where where are we where are we thinking this team lands with a MVP level Mike Trout? Unfortunately, it, the AL West is very loaded, and unfortunately, the Angels could not get it done with Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, both healthy. I don't see them improving after losing Shohei Otani. Is that Mike Trout's fault? Obviously not. Are people going to blame Mike Trout? Yes, because some people think it's a one-man's game somehow. I don't know how you could ever use playoff appearances, playoff stats, World Series championships to argue player-wise in any sport, especially baseball. Somehow people are going to blame Mike Trout for this. But the Angels are going to finish in fourth. The offense is fine. It's all mid-to-back in starters. Bullpen is 
not horrible, not great. And again, it's a tough American League West. Yeah, I think you nailed it. The AL West is a very, very competitive division. I mentioned it in the other episode that we've already recorded, but it's it's going to be a tough division to compete. It's going to be, I mean, I, I am very interested to see who wins it, but it's it's unfortunate, unfortunate for Angels fans. It's going to be a fourth place finish. I wouldn't be shocked if they take a third place finish. It wouldn't, especially with especially with like the very very healthy Mike Trout that we're talking about. If if Mike Trout goes takeover mode, like I who knows what this team is capable of. But ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to another one. As always, you can find the links in the description of this episode. Uh, you can find us anywhere you find your podcast, anywhere on social media. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to another one, and we will see you in the next episode.